Exploitation Section Exhibitors Trade Review April 22nd, 1922 Instead of playing up the name of the feature in their electric sign, the Majestic Theater, Portland, Oregon, went out of the ordinary and played up First National Week in electric lights. This, with other advertising, impressed the importance of First National attractions on the Portlanders, and resulted in big business during the week. The Howard, Atlanta, Georgia, has a massive lobby, and manager DeSales Harrison arranged his display for Paramount's A Fool's Paradise with this thought in mind. It suggested the firmament in the magic carpet sequence in the picture, and the value of the display was enhanced by concealed lights. This beautiful motion picture house, the Teatro General Belgrano, Buenos Aires, owned by Max Glucksmann, is now the home of Paramount Pictures in that city, according to the big sign just above the entrance. It is hardly probable that Paramount could have picked a more beautiful home for their pictures in South America than this. Here's a new one in the way of prologues. Used by the Newman, Kansas City, for First National's Polly of the Follies, this Pullman brought the whole bunch on the stage four times a day. The girls alighted and did their singing and dancing act while the Pullman traveled on. Its element of surprise and ingenuity would please any audience. Joplin, Missouri is where William Parsons holds forth as manager of the Pershing, and when he played Universal's Winners of the West, he got an idea of a ballyhoo from the press book that he thought would attract attention and at the same time do the job. This is what he put out, and he was more than repaid for his trouble and expense. As a prologue for First National's My Boy, managing director Reed of the Branford, Newark, New Jersey, had a girl dressed as Jackie sing, if you like me as I like you, with the stage set to typify the deck of a ship. It was in line with the scenes of the first reel, and made a big hit with the kiddies. Ed Stolt, manager of the Des Moines, Des Moines, Iowa, found this young lady resembled Dorothy Dalton, so he persuaded her to dress up in maritime breeches, ride around in an automobile, and deliver data on Paramount's Moran of the Lady Letty. Results at the box office showed that he had worked along the right lines. Mounting a 24 sheet in the back of the lobby, next placing imitation iron bars in front of it to represent a cage, then flanking it with large sized stills, the casino, Lakeland, California, achieved a noteworthy display for Goldwyn's Theodora that showed real showmanship. Mount Vernon, Ohio happens to be the boyhood home of Von Kester, the author of The Prodigal Judge, and when Vitagraph's production of this novel played the Vine Theater, Mount Vernon got behind it with a vengeance, advertising the author and film in every conceivable way. This shows two of the windows arranged by prominent merchants during the run. R.P. Kahn, manager of the Rialto of Brooklyn, New York, says this window tie-up for Paramount's Saturday Night was one of the best he ever had. A new brand of toothpaste was displayed along with stills of the feature, and a free ticket was given with each fourth purchase of toothpaste. When Wesley Berry visited Milwaukee during the showing of First National's Penrod at the Strand, the management advertised for boys to take part in a prologue with him, and this is what Wesley and the kids turned out to the delight of the Strand's audience, who greeted it with thunderous applause. Maintaining dignity in all of his advertising for Universal's No Woman Knows, the manager of the Blue Mouse, Portland, Oregon, hit the bullseye with this lobby. This staid old buggy, reminiscent of old times, was used by manager George Rhea of the Forum, Hillsboro, Ohio, as a ballyhoo for First National's My Boy. Using talented youngsters secured from the schools of Philadelphia, the Stanley put on a prologue for Warner Brothers' School Days that secured unusual results and went a long way toward making this feature a hit with the kiddies of Philadelphia. It had a local touch that appealed. G.B. Adams, manager of the Palacio, Porto Alegre, Brazil, went his fellow exhibitors one better and put out a big ballyhoo for Universal's The Moon Riders that made the inhabitants of that charming country pour in his theater to see what caused all of this unusual excitement. The management of the Stanley, Philadelphia, achieved the kid atmosphere all right for Warner Brothers' school days when they dressed the staff in costumes similar to those worn by the performers in this popular feature. It added a lot to the presentation. Vesuvius in action moving around the streets of New York on a big truck was the unique method the Autobahn Theater used to gain publicity for Fox's newsreel. It did the job to a fair you well too, as a traveling volcano in action will attract attention from old or young alike anywhere. 
Manager Cobe of the Central, New York, arranged a prologue for Universal's Man to Man that caused considerable comment. The setting reproduced the opening scene in the picture, while the performers, in native costume, carried out the action. It went over big. This ship, arranged in the lobby of the Grand Corsicana, Texas during First National Week, is one of the stunts that helped give manager John Paxton a free trip to Los Angeles as the guest of First National. Manager Khan of the Rialto, Brooklyn, New York, put out a ghostly ballyhoo for Paramount's three live ghosts that made the staid Brooklynites do some tall looking. 30 feet wide and 10 deep is the size of this hand-painted board Manager Wetstein put over the front of the Merrill, Milwaukee, for First National's The Rosary. Wetstein got his idea from the fire scene in the picture, and this sign attracted crowds just the same as a real fire would have done.